In Boca. Chats with Amy. When it comes to cuisine, Amy Yee knows her stuff. Having rocked that John George in Upland, she's now the saucy culinary director of Soho's new food darling, Westbourne, which not only serves up amazing tastes, but also dishes up a long list of philanthropic partnerships, making it not just taste good, but feel good. She's a beautiful human, makes beautiful food, and is a pleasure to talk to. So let's get into it. Hello? Can you, I can you see you. me? I can hear oh, wait. you. I can see you. You look like you're in uh, another world. I am. I'm in the Imboka world. Wait, how do you do that? Yeah, well, that's a that's an upper level thing. You got to pay extra. Oh, it's an upgrade. No. Are you, you, the computer? you know, see the little stop video down there. Yeah. There's a little arrow next to it on the right. Oh. Use virtual background. This has become a tutorial video. And then yeah, um, forget. I want more of this. Yeah, I had some pretty lewd stuff on there after a conversation with my friends, and I had a business meeting after, and it stays on there. So it like, does. Oh, yeah, it does. So, Wait, how do you choose one? Well, you choose virtual background, and then the, you see a little plus sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We add that. Um. Okay, sorry, I'm distracted now. It's all right. Give me 10 minutes, just kidding. Um, (laughs) How are you? I'm good, it's so good to see you, it's been so long. I know, I thought you were still here. I'm so confused where you are in general, but. I'm never anywhere too long because that's that's who I am, but uh, I'm still there. And then I come to Hollywood and I live here when there's pandemic. Your girlfriend's there? Girlfriend's here. And it's a nice place to spend the quarantine because everyone here is a bum. So I fit right in. Uh, wait, when did you go there? Um, a couple of weeks ago, just right after. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Got it. No, but I've been here for a while. I go back and forth as. as oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You can't take the kid out of Brooklyn. I mean, I'm sorry. It just, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Um, you're doing well. I am. Where are you? I'm in South Slope. I've never been over there. It looks nice. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's, it's, in the beginning, it was like the outskirts of Park Slope, and now it's creeped towards me, which is nicer, so there's more amenities. and It so still takes a fucking hour to get to Manhattan, but like, it's at least like there's stuff around. Do you know the Caputos? you ever go down to the Caputos? Uh, the, wait, what are they? Caputo's bread? Italian grocers. They do bread. Oh, um, no, that's more. Is that more Carol Gardeny? It is more Carol Garden. Yeah, no, I'm not there. I that's like go. a. You got to go. So, how are you during this quarantine? What are you doing these days? I'm. It's funny. So, the quarantine literally coincided with me leaving my job. Perfect. At a restaurant. So it was just all kinds of, you know, honestly, I haven't really like sat down and thought about it, but it was, it's been strange. Um, I left my job like, or I gave my notice in November and then I, I, uh, spent the last month or three weeks of my job in at home working from home. So it was like a weird transition, especially for a restaurant job. Yeah. Um, but now I'm actually helping a friend, my friend Daniel Eddy. Do you, you remember the restaurant Rebel? Yeah, of course. So he used to be the chef there okay. and um, took a couple years off and actually opened up a restaurant called Winner on 7th Avenue and 12th Street. Um, okay. And I very much like a neighborhood bumped into him and was like, what are you doing here? That's crazy. You have a restaurant. And he had the misfortune of opening his restaurant, like literally day one of quarantine. Oh my God. That's horrible. It's horrible. And fortunately he's like, just like a really great guy, really positive spirit and like great attitude. And he's been making it work. Yeah. At that point. Um, so it's, it's a boulang. the original concept was the boulangerie and a natural wine bar because nice. it has like a carriage house next to it, but now it's serving, it's still doing the bread program and the re- neighborhood's going like crazy for it. Cause it's like fresh bed, 
out of the oven, like just like literally at the window. Um, and then he's doing a weekly chef pop up with his friends. Yeah. So I did the first one a few weeks ago and we did a Korean pop up for the neighborhood for takeout. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been like really helpful to keep me creative. And now we're doing a weekend pop up um, on, <laughs> we're calling it K pop up. And it's going to be Friday. (laughs) I wish I thought of that, but actually Daniel thought of that. Um, It's an adorable name. And we're going to do Korean fried chicken and dumplings. Oh, my God. I don't know how the Koreans figured out how to fry chicken better than the rest of the world, but I I don't know know how they do it either. That's also the problem. Yeah. Um, I should actually, like, eat more Korean fried chicken to even know what I'm talking about. but. Fortunately, I have the face to just give bide me time <laughs> until, they, until they realize I've never made Korean fried chicken or like eaten a lot of it. That's okay. You're a tremendous chef. I'm sure you can figure it out in a second. Yeah. Um, so tell me this. Has your relationship with food changed at all during the quarantine? Um, yeah. I mean, I think like most people, I'm like cooking more. Yeah. And like, I think the joke is like, there's so many fucking dishes to do every two hours. Cause you're just like cooking every meal. And like, right. In a way it's been more like, like going back to the times when like your work was like, just like surviving, you know, like dishes, laundry, making clothes, making your bed. It's yeah. like, that's you what live you on do a farm now. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, bread, it's yeast. like I live on a farm. Right. Um, and I guess, I don't know. I mean, it's been tough because, like, I I want to, like, because we're quarantined, it's not like I can, like, go around and, like, go to the farmer's market and, like, get all this, like, really cool stuff and, you know, do all this stuff. So it's like you're, like, kind of having to use what you have near you. Um, right. You can't really get into it as deep as you want because yeah. everything's open. But at the same time, you have to do it with right. what is available. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I guess I've just been, we've just been cooking more and it's been really nice to have like set meal times. Like this is when we like eat, this is when we have lunch together. This, right. like, I don't think I've ever had that. I think a lot of chefs, you know, the, the light in any of this is that like a lot of us that work so hard, it's one of the few times we've had that like that time to just like be with the family you've never been able to be with or like the other person. Right. Yeah. It's like, wow, you're just home all day. And more, I think people are more grappling with that version of quarantine than like, you know, the other stuff. Right. I mean, do you think when the world starts turning again, like you'll have different priorities in mind? I mean, that's kind of was my personal journey with my previous job and with where I am now. Yeah. And I think it's definitely catching up with a lot of chefs, you know, that whole old school working underground kind of thing doesn't really, it, you know, doesn't work anymore. And I, I, you know, I think the hope is with, the quarantine and with the limitations of restaurants and kind of the backlash with like how they've been treated, you know, the hope is that like we can come out of this with some positive, you know, impact on the rest industry in general, but it's tough. I mean, one of the things like we were struggling with, so at the bakery, we have this barista girl that is like the face of, you know, the window and she does all the transactions for the bread and the coffee and whatever. And because she's monitoring the POS system, she does all like the tip. So most people don't know this, but all tips legally have to go to a guest. Like, I don't know what the terminology is, but like a guest facing person. Yeah. And I haven't like researched it, but pretty sure it's based on like old time laws because it was for servers or waiters or people that were, you know, well kept and, you know, the tips wouldn't go to the back of house or the people that worked behind the scenes. And that's still a rule to this day. Oh, that's crazy. So that's why tips like tip pulls 
you know, are only going to servers or waiters and back waiters. They right. never go to, they never go to quarters or dishwashers, but right, right. the thing here that, you know, has become kind of an issue is one, obviously, because there's like, we're only four people and like this barista's taking all the tips. She's not only kind of asking everyone for tips, which I found kind of strange, like, Oh, would you like to add a tip? Because there's like no, uh, they don't get to touch the screen. So you have to kind of like prompt them. Right, you ask them. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but Kevin, the fucking baker behind her is like doling out like a hundred baguettes a day and he doesn't get shit. Right. And everyone's like going crazy about the bread, not the fucking drip coffee. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's just bonkers. And it's like kind of, it's a brave new world, <laughs> new system. Yeah. Man. So stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, you know, I deal with that too. We hope, God it could change that. I don't know, but. Well, I think it's been really interesting how these restaurants have been innovative on how to stay open. I know here in LA, a lot of my friends that own places have been like selling groceries and like prepackaged meals and even meat, yeah. charcuterie, like really cool stuff. And yeah. it's even, it's nice because you don't get to buy the wares from a restaurant normally because they're not grocers, but right. it's interesting to get a steak from them that they normally cook for you. And then you cook it at home and like, you're like, Oh, they do make it better. Or I make it better. Like you get to see like, Oh, are they selling the like a raw piece of steak? Yeah. Or like exactly like the raw ingredients that go into something or a dish down there. I mean, my little French place down the street is selling eggs and milk and like, yeah, it's whatever. And it's, it's great because they can keep their supply chain going. They right. feed the neighborhood and, and give us the things we need. So it's just been really yeah. interesting to how these people have like innovated their, their job models basically. Yeah. I think it's, uh, there's, yeah, just trying to fucking float. And stay alive. Stay yeah. alive. I mean, that's what Daniel's doing at winter. It's like, you want, sell, you want bread? Cool. We'll make bread. You want Korean fried chicken? Yeah, we'll do that too. You want Never. some like, cocktails in a glass? Like, yeah, it's like fucking anything that you can yeah. like transact for money. Yeah, it's crazy. People have been really hit hard. And I mean, Italy had been hit really hard, especially when we were making this doc. Um, it was like influencing me. Like, Where, when were you there? We weren't there. We, I... I mean, we go all the time. But that, <laughs> the the trip with uh, his family was... That was a couple of years ago. Oh, that was a couple <laughs> years ago, okay. And, like, since then, we left our motorcycles there, and we jump back, like, whenever we can to jump on yeah. them and go explore, because that's yeah, like, yeah. an amazing fucking dream to have. But right. when we shot this thing, it was, like, the day before lockdown, and we're like, this is, like, going to be the last supper, so we better do, like, a blowout. And so the scenes from the rest uh, from the apartment, right? So yeah. we made this big meal. And we shot it, but like the two weeks after, when everything was locked down, I was editing it, and I just get this news of Italy getting like destroyed by this yeah. pandemic, and people dying, and people are calling me, and I'm talking to my relatives, and like people are dead in the streets, and I mean they really got hit hard. Yeah. So you know, it, it definitely influenced why we we're making it and all this stuff, but. I kind of wanted to get your opinion on it. Like you've watched it. Like, what did you think of the video and the yeah. message? Um, I thought it was fun. I mean, like I'm not a cinematographer or anything, but just watching food videos, I think it like, it's like incredibly playful and it totally feeds into that. Like, you know, like kind of just like sound effects and like making it like, you know, fast and like catchy. So like yeah. in that sense, you're one of the questions was like, does it matter if we're not, if we're, uh, like, how, what does it look like? Non. As non chefs to a chef. Cooks. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of like, did not matter because it was so much more like of a visual <laughs> dynamic fun kind of thing. Yeah. And the recipes were, I think you chose well, like they were obviously accessible. I familiar and like, I know what, a pork chop is that I don't, you don't have to like get all technical about it. Totally. And I found all the recipes to be really simple, even like a chicken liver mousse pasta, right. which I never heard of nor seen. Yeah. It was my only, the real. only thing that I was curious of was, um, and maybe I missed it, but like what it actually said in the book would be, would have been interesting. 
Well, or was like, were the like directions like literally what you did or you kind of exactly. And, uh, other chefs have said, like, I like some have said, I like how you didn't really weren't so technical about the ingredients or like how to prepare things like modern cooking shows are or modern recipe books, but the recipes in the, the book itself, um, they literally go like grab a bit of salt, um, cook the meat, <laughs> like, yeah. like tell you how long, make a mayonnaise, like you know how to make a mayonnaise. So it's like your ma tells you how to cook or how- What year like, were they written again? 76, but the book was published in 76. The recipes are like yeah. from someone's grandmother sometimes. Right, right, right. You know? Sometimes ancient Roman recipes that like are in Latin that they've translated. So it's really interesting how the language of, of cooking is different in these books than and are they all in Italian? Did you tra- did you have to translate? No, they're them? written in Italian and English and in the regional dialect, which is cool. So, like, if it's yeah. a Sicilian book, they'll be in Sicilian, which is not Italian. It's like a New Yorker saying, oh, wow. "Yeah, grab that." Then you're gonna throw it in there. Everything gonna be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like that's how it's written. So it's funny. It's um, it's different way of cooking, but. I think the recipes are naturally simple and good. So it wasn't so hard for us to recreate. Right. Right. Which is Italian. Yeah. It would be funny to have like snippets where it was like, I, I, I don't know what the joke is, but like, you know, if it said something ridiculous, like, you know, cut the head off of the chicken and put it in the pot or something. And you're like, I'm not going to do that. Well, we're going to do more. I mean, there's hundreds of recipes and there's 20 different regions. So you know, this is going to be a, a series yeah. and we're going to go. That's so fun. Eat. Yeah, it's going to be good. But I'm glad you liked it. I really, uh, I'm glad you watched it and you, you could check it out. And I love hearing what people think about it, especially yeah. from chefs, because um, it's, you know, making food's important. It, it, it connects everybody. It does. It connected us. I know. It's so crazy. It is. Are you still, you're still friends with Jared, yeah? Oh my God, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I talked to him yesterday. He's good. He's still, you know, eating prosciutto and cooking up storms. He's got two kids and living in a castle, stuck in the forest. He's in a mansion in San Francisco. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. Have you visited? Um, I saw him last time I was in San Francisco, um, and he like we'll like text. Well, he's one of those friends where it's like, I'll text, we'll always text each other when we're in that city. Region, yeah. And if, we, if we're if we available, you know, we'll say hi. If not, yeah. not. Well, that's and the old school bond. Successful. Yeah. Last time he was here, we had like a three-course uh, dinner at three different restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally Jared, man. <laughs> Which is amazing. Like, we went to we went to some Korean restaurant in East Village. I don't remember the name. Had dinner. Walked around, had a snack somewhere, and then ended up at Joel Baco. Oh my god! For, and then because I used to work there, Jack, the owner, gave us like a fucking omakase dessert and, and champagne, and we're like, cool. <laughs> oh my god, that's one of my favorite restaurants in the entire city. So, so pretty, good. so good. Um, Why, where was I? Where was the invite? I don't know. <laughs> you were like gallivanting in Iceland or something. Probably, probably. Well, listen, we all need to get together and do a big blowout meal. I know. Yeah. That would be so fun. Yeah, it would be fantastic. Um, does he still have that place in Italy? Yeah, he does. Is he still... Is he it- rents it out, and he's got the other little one in Antishana that, you know, is like a backup. What's the town again? Camayore. Camayore. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. What do you do in the <laughs> summer? Come on over. Um, are you? Do you go there? Like, I go every summer. No, you don't. Like a prescription. Really? To Camayote? Yeah. Or? Yeah, I love it. I love Via Reggio, and I love, I've been going there for years. I think it's the greatest beach town in do Italy. Do you go with Jared, or do you, like, rent it for yourself? No, or? I usually don't stay at that big house, because he usually rents it out in the summer to tourists, which is great, because it's such a pretty place. But he's got another little tiny apartment in a little mountain town not too far that... Uh-huh. Yeah, it's so special. It's a vertical stone building that, yeah. like, it's the size of a cupcake. And then you go wow. up the stairs, and there's the bedroom, and then you go up again, and there's another little bedroom. But it's it's I didn't know that. It's like five little houses on top of a mountain, and that's the town. 
uh, it's it's where I want to write the great American novel. <laughs> you know, okay. like, there's nothing better. So I try to go there every time. I jump on the bike in Milan, and a couple yeah. hours I'm in Via Reggio and enjoying a nice linguine um, with lambs on the beach. My boyfriend, who's been in the background, Dan, we went to um, Lake Como last year uh, and did like a car tour, detour to Bergamo, which uh, unfortunately is one of the cities most hit. Um, and then a couple other like smaller towns in between. But How did you like it? It's so beautiful, no? It was amazing. Yeah. You I know mean, it was amazing because it was the first there. time I got to do it by car or like my own transportation. Yeah, you know, it's different when you're on the road and not in the train window. Definitely. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, just sad and like accidental, you know, agriturismo restaurants that you like see in the middle of the highway and all that stuff. Yeah, it's but the I best. totally want to go back. Because honestly, before that, it was like Camayore and like a fucking college tour of Rome. Right. Um, I haven't spent that much time in Italy at all. You got to. And please, you know, if there's ever a window of opportunity, buy the ticket, we'll go, we'll jump yeah. on the bikes and we'll, you know, the little towns have the best food. I love that. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Too. On my list. Well, my dear, it was lovely talking with you. I'm glad we could jump on this call. Yeah. It's so nice Thanks to see you. Thanks for doing it. Yeah. Please stay safe, um, and I hope everything uh, goes well, man. I can't wait to try this new place you're working on. I know. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you after this. Okay. okay. All my love. Bye. Bye. 20 rare cookbooks, four tasty dishes, two best friends. Watch the film, see the books, help Italy recover. Get hungry at italyandboca.com.